Hi, I'm John Corvino. When I was in college, we had a gay student association, and I thought that was pretty good. Then that became the Gay and Lesbian Student Association, and I thought, great. Then the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual Student Association. I thought, awesome. Then the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Student Association. Terrific. Then the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender, Intersex, Queer, Questioning, Asexual, Two-Spirit, Tried It Once, I Was Drunk, Kind of Curious. It's a lot to put on a t-shirt. No, seriously, I think it's great that we are more sensitive to the diversity of sexual orientations and gender identities. I also think it's important to keep these things separate sometimes, because otherwise we paper over important differences and we give different groups short shrift. My work tends to focus on moral arguments against same-sex relationships, and I approach this as a gay man. That's my experience. A lot of what I say applies not just to the G, but also to the L and the B, even sometimes the T. But people get really confused about the whole alphabet soup, and they ask me questions about these other things sometimes, and I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about two of the other letters, the B and the T. So some people say, well, I just don't understand bisexuality. Let me take a moment to explain. Some people are attracted to both men and women. That's it. No, really, that's it. Doesn't mean they're attracted to everyone because that would be exhausting. Doesn't mean they're confused. Doesn't mean they haven't decided yet. Why do we have such a hard time wrapping our head around bisexuality? Well, I think part of it is that some of us in coming out as gay people weren't ready to say that we were gay, so we said we were bisexual as a way of kind of dipping our toe in the water, the whole buy now, gay later phenomenon. But just because that's true of some of us, it doesn't follow that it's true of everyone who identifies as bisexual. It should go without saying, but there are genuine bisexuals in the world. Then there's our tendency to identify the sexes as opposite. We talk about the opposite sex. And so people conclude, well, insofar as you're attracted to one, you can't be attracted to the other. Well, the sexes, in fact, have a lot in common, right? There's skin, hair, opposable thumbs. More important, there's personalities and the capacity to love. Furthermore, it's possible to find things appealing even though they're opposite in some sense. I like both hot tea and iced tea, for example. So, John, you're saying that this is as inconsequential as your choice of a beverage? Um, no. I'm saying there's no conceptual confusion involved in being attracted to opposite things. Then there's the fact that people often signal their sexual orientation by the relationship that they're in. So if I'm in a relationship with a man, you identify me as gay. For a bisexual person, unless they're in a polyamorous relationship, they can't do that in quite the same way. And so instead, people make all kinds of assumptions about them. They see a bisexual woman who's in a relationship with a woman and later a relationship with a man, they say, oh, she was just experimenting before. Or they'll see a bisexual man who was in a relationship with a woman and then a relationship with a man. It's like, he was really gay all along. Some people actually prefer to identify as omnisexual or pansexual rather than bisexual because it gets them past the whole binary construction of gender. In fact, some people do that with respect to their gender identity. They identify not as a man or a woman, but as genderqueer. Which brings me to the issue of gender identity and more specifically to transgender, the T part of LGBT. Transgender people are people whose gender identity differs from that that they were assigned at birth. So they may have been born biologically male, but come to understand themselves as girls or as women. Or they may have been born biologically female and come to understand themselves as boys or as men. For the uninitiated, the opposite of this is cisgender, those of us whose gender identity matches that we were assigned at birth. So transgender is not about the gender of the people you're attracted to. It's about the gender that you are. Some transgender people may eventually have hormone treatment or surgery in order to bring their physical appearance more in line with their gender identity, but many, in fact, do not. It's important to understand that sexual orientation and gender identity vary independently. 
transgender people can exhibit the same range of sexual orientations that cisgender people do. They may be heterosexual or gay or lesbian or bisexual. And so people ask me, well, if gender identity and sexual orientation are different, why do we include the T in LGBT? Well, because we have some shared goals and similar experiences. For example, there are shared political goals like employment non-discrimination, not getting fired from your job because of who you are. There are shared experiences with respect to the coming out process, to struggles with family. There are rigid social expectations with respect to sex and gender. So compare, if you're born biologically male, you ought to grow up to be a man. If you're born biologically male, you ought to grow up to love women. Here we see sort of intersection between sexism and heterosexism. And there's the fact that because these issues trigger some of the same anxiety in other people, the people beating up on the T people are often the very same people beating up on the L or the G or the B people. So it can be useful to talk about our LGBT community, but also useful to talk about our distinctive overlapping communities, each with its own interests and experiences and challenges. In fact, it's most useful sometimes to stop talking and to listen and let people tell their own stories rather than imposing our preconceived notions on them. Besides, to the extent that we keep these things separate, you get more t-shirts that way. I know that gay people are supposed to be all design savvy and everything, but can we be honest for just a sec? Some of these t-shirts are just ugly. I mean, look at this. I realize there's only so much you can do with rainbow colors, but come on.